Hello, everybody. Um, so my name's Craig. Um, I'm the chief executive, which means I'm in charge of a company called Experian that's here in the United States. Um, although you might gather from my accent that I'm originally from England. Um, I did uh, promise my son Felix, who's in kinder, that I would say hi to Morgan and Hudson, who I think are over here. So thank you very much for being such lovely buddies. Um, I know Felix appreciates it very much. Um, and he made me promise that before I left home this morning. Um, now, actually, uh, I have had a quite a busy couple of days uh, here at Pegasus, actually. I played in the Dad's Basketball uh, League last night, um, which was great fun. Um, I'm on the team with uh, Mr. Bridges, uh, who's one of the teachers here, and Mr. Meister, who's married to Miss Meister, the librarian. And um, I am pleased to say we did come home with trophies last night, so it was a very exciting day for us. Um, but before that, I'd actually traveled back from England. Um, and I don't know if there are any... Uh, pop music fans or anybody likes One Direction, but I sat next to Harry Styles, who's in One Direction on the aeroplane back yesterday uh, afternoon, and I was looking at my presentation, getting ready for uh, presenting here at Pegasus. So I wonder what Harry Styles thinks about my presentation uh, in credit and money. Um, but I know you're all also about to begin a part of your uh, curriculum that's to do with the stock market, and um, I saw the information about the stock market simulation game you're going to be playing, which looked uh, very exciting. So I thought I'd just talk a little bit this morning um, to you about money and the things uh, involved in money and maybe some of the roles that my company played uh, in helping that work here in the United States. Uh, also, we're going to have a little uh, game, an interactive session as well, and I have uh, Abigail here with me uh, who also comes from Experian. Um, Abigail's been a great help in putting this together because she has uh, twin sixth graders at a different school, and so they've been part of our test audience. Um, and don't worry, we also have got some goodie bags at the end, so please just stay with me, ask some good, and I think one of your teachers said, thoughtful questions, um, uh, and then uh, we'll get to that all at the end. But uh, one of the things, of course, that does impact all of our lives is money, in some way, shape, or form. It has an important uh, role in our lives, because it helps us buy things, and it's what we call tender. Now, I don't know if any of you have ever worked out, this is a dollar bill, what a dollar bill is really about. So, does anybody know what it says at the top of a dollar bill? On one side it says, in God we trust, so not that side, but, but on the other side. It says, the United States of America, and then it says some important words. Have a no, it's, it's, it talks about the important parts of our society on the other side, but on this side it talks about what the money's about. Um, no, but that would, be, that, would, um, that would also be a good thing. That's not the bit I'm talking about, so I'll read you my bit, because this um, helps us understand a little bit about the beginnings of money and what we call credit. So it says, this note is legal tender for all debts, public and private. Now, I'm originally from England, as I said, and on our bills, it says something that means pretty much the same thing. It says, I promise to pay the bearer, the person holding this note, the sum of, and whatever the amount is. What that basically means is, in some way, shape, or form, money, these kind of bills that we have, don't, aren't worth anything. They're not worth anything at all. They're just the promise of some money. Because actually, if you think about it, what can you do with a dollar bill? Well, actually, you could buy something with it, but it of itself isn't worth anything. And so the whole thing that underpins, the whole thing that sits underneath the way that we think about money is that we promise things to other people. We say, I'll give you this if you give me that. I'll give you this dollar bill, and you give me that candy bar. You, in turn, can give this dollar bill to somebody else. Now, you're going to learn more about this when you talk about the uh, stock market, because what the stock market's all about is buying shares that aren't actually worth anything. They're the promise that you get to share some of the money made by a company. This is a very important concept that I will keep talking about, and I hope your teachers will work with you on, because it actually underpins really the way that money works in society. And what my company does is it helps people understand whether it's a good choice to, give, to lend money to somebody or not. Are you a good choice? Do I think that you are going to repay the money? Do I think that it's a responsible thing for me to do? And so really, money comes all down to promises and good choices. So I'm really delighted that at, as 
fifth grade already, you're starting to think about money and what it means. And so we talk about this term financially literate. Financially meaning being about money, and literate in this context meaning having a good understanding or knowledge of. And what will it help you do? Well, it will help you with some of these things. Pay for a college education, get a good job, have a cell phone, purchase a car, buy a house. So that's why it's important. But we talk about this term credit. And what does credit really mean? Well, credit really means, right back to the beginning, the ability to borrow something and promise to pay it back. So when people want to buy a car, often they take a loan out. And a loan means they go to the bank and they say, I want to buy this nice Mercedes. Will you lend me some money, bank, to allow me to buy it? And you say yes. The bank says yes, or they say no. If they say yes, they've given you some credit. Talk to like credits that you get um, at school, which, are mar which in that sense are marks or scores. Yes, you've done well. This is credit, which is money that you've borrowed. You promise to pay it back, and you promise to pay it back with something called interest. In other words, you promise to pay it back with a bit more money. So let's say you borrow $10, and over time you'll pay back $12. And so the bank has made $2. The bank has made $2, and in that sense we'd call it profits. So the bank's made $2 of profits, you've got $10, and you've got to have the car. Now think about the person that sold you the car, they've got the $10 to buy the car as well. So this is what credit is about. But imagine if you're the bank, and you give somebody $10, and you're hoping to get $12 back. But imagine they can't pay you the money back. So in the end, you don't get any money back. You get nothing back. You've lost $10. And so your ability to make a good choice about, yes, that person is I should lend uh, $10 to. So I'm going to lend most only $10 because I think she's a good credit risk. I'm going to look at Mr. Lopez and think, well, I'm not really sure, so maybe I won't lend him $10 because, well, I'm not so sure he's going to pay me back or not. This is what we do at work in my company all day, every day. We use all sorts of information to help understand whether it's a good choice or not a good choice. So what sort of information do you think we might use? So if I'm thinking about lending you some money, what sort of things would I think about? Excellent. Excellent answer. If you paid back other loans, that's an excellent answer. Yeah, trustworthy. So what other things would I think about as to whether somebody is trustworthy? Yeah, make sure it's a smart choice, absolutely. Very good. So look at their background and what jobs they've had. So we think about how much money they make. Right? It's a good, very good answer. Right. To make sure that they have enough money. Now, they definitely won't have a million dollars, or most likely won't, if you're trying to lend them a million dollars, but you have to take a judgment, you have to make a decision, do they have enough money? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, yes, that's right. So the question was, wouldn't it be a percentage? So interest rates, which is what we call it on loans, are normally calculated in percentage terms. That, that's right. Um, but sometimes there are fixed amounts. It depends on the kind of loan, but normally they're in percentage rates. I just use a number to make it easier uh, to explain the example. But thank you for the question. Um, so those are the all sorts of different things um, that, we might, that we might use to work out whether somebody's a good choice. And we'll come back and talk about that a bit more. So there are lots of different kinds of what we call credit. So here's a good definition for you all to remember. Credit is receiving money, goods, or services. So money, things, goods, or services, going to the movies, uh, having uh, somebody cut your hair, um, that you pay for at a later date. So I'll get it now, 
and I'll promise to pay it later. Basically, all the way back to the beginning, it's all about promises and good choices. We talk about different kinds of credit, and maybe sometimes they're at different kinds of amounts of money. So a mortgage, probably you all heard the term mortgage, a mortgage is used for buying a house. Your mortgage is basically normally used for buying a house. And so what happens is, I choose a house that I'd like to buy, and I go to the bank and I say, I'd like to borrow some money to buy this house. And they're okay with that because they look at all the choices about me. Do I pay my debts on time? Am I a trustworthy character? Do I have a job? And then they look at how much the house is worth. And they say, well, that's fine, but if you don't pay me back, I will take the house. So they know in the end, they have what we call a security. They have something that makes them be secure. And in that sense, it's the house. There's installment credit, which says, I'd like to borrow some money to buy a car. And I promise over three years, I'll pay you back in installments, which is fixed amounts. I'll pay you back every month. And so over three years, I'll pay you back in 36 months with interest. And then there are credit cards. And we'll talk a bit more about that in a second. But the um, plastic that, that you see used by people in their wallets, the credit cards, which are another kind of promise. Now, I don't know if anybody knows, there are two kinds of cards. One's called a debit card, and one's called a credit card. Does anybody know what the differences are? Yes, you had your hand up first. That's right. So the difference between a debit card and a credit card is, in a debit card, you have an account that you've put your own money into, and this is a way of spending that money. Basically, it's a replacement for cash. It's a replacement for going to the ATM machine and taking money out of the, out of the bank. You just use the, use the card instead. A credit card, you don't have the money already. You promise to pay the money in the future. So that's the difference between a credit and a debit card. Did you have questions? Okay. Exactly. In the debit, it goes straight out of your account, straight away, because you've got the money. And in the credit, you get a bill and you pay monthly. Yes? Well, so is debit card for younger people and credit card for older people? No, sometimes they're used for different things. It's harder, it's easy for a young person to get a debit card because it's attached directly to a bank that's got money in it already. And a credit card, which is why we're talking about this now, so thank you, it's a perfect question. You, we need to believe that you're trustworthy and you're going to pay the money back. Now, it's not that young people aren't trustworthy, it's just that you don't have a job yet, and so you don't have any way to get the money. And so people like us will say, well, we'll look at all of the things about a person. Well, they don't have a job yet, so they have no way to pay it back. But on a debit card, you don't have any risk there because the money comes straight out of the account. Yes? That's right. So on a debit card, you can only pay as much as you have uh, on the card. That's right. So this is what we do at my company. We do what's called credit reports and credit scores. And so the way to think about this is a credit report, here we go, we've got a definition here. So it's a record of your debts and whether or not you pay on time. So whoever said earlier about paying on time, there you go, right up there in the definition. The easiest way to think about it is like a report card. And each and every adult has one of these report cards. A credit score is like the grade on the card. It helps people that are going to lend money make an easy and a quick choice without having to go through all of this information. There's an example you see on the right-hand side of a credit report and a score. And the number, can you see 723 there, sort of in the middle? That's the grade or the score. And that's a reasonable to good score. So it goes from naught all the way up to 999, and 723 there's a pretty good score. What we do though is we take lots and lots of information in all of the time. From the very beginning of how you are with your money, we start capturing information about you. So from when you leave school, 
when you start actually having a bank account, we capture lots of information about are you taking good choices with your money? And so the good choices that you take early on with your money impact all the way through your life. And the more and more good choices you get, the better and better grade that you have. And when you start taking bad choices, like not paying things back or being late or not being thoughtful about how you use your money, your uh, grade goes down. And when your grade goes down, your ability to buy bigger things, like houses and cars and other things, goes away. So credit can be used for big purchases, or it can be used for small purchases. And the one thing I want you all to think is, when it's time to leave school, or even now, I think one of you said you had the debit card already, are you taking good choices with how you use money? Because it impacts you all the way through your life. So let's just think, now let's go back to systematically how it all works, right? So we're trying to put some big, big ideas out here. The first of them is money is a promise. The second is the good choices that you take impacts whether people will lend you money over time. And, and the third is how money flows. Because in the end, you have to pay it back. This is the thing everybody has to remember, right? We all have to remember this. When you borrow money, you have to pay it back. And so you need to be sure that you can pay it back. And that's your choice that you have to take. So here's the easy way that money flows. It would be my life. I earn a paycheck. My company doesn't give me the money. It puts it into my bank account in a checking account. And then I use it to pay my bills, goods, services, Pegasus school fees, all those other things. Um, and then whatever I have left at the end, I save and I use for the future. So this is the way that the basics of monies work. Always remember that this is what's actually happening because the ways these days that we're able to interact with money are ever more confusing or lots and lots of them, right? So who could think of some examples of where you might already be using credit? At a restaurant, yeah. That might probably be your parents. What's something you might do that might use, a cre use credit? Buy a computer, yeah. Yep. Yeah, but how would you be using credit, though, to buy it? Mm -hmm. You might say to the fishing store, um, I promise I'll pay you back next month, and they might let you pay you back. That gift cards, yes, yeah, very good question. Gift cards is just like a debit because you buy the gift card and you've got money on it and so the person can use it straight away. Who has an, who, um, has an iTunes account? There you go. So lots of you have iTunes account. When you buy it, when you buy something on iTunes, you buy a song or you buy a TV show or you buy an app or whatever it might be, you are using credit. Because what you're doing is you're using some money that you don't have right there in your hand. You're buying something, and you're telling Apple, I promise to pay you. Apple is paying the owner of the app or the music, and they are borrowing the money, and you're paying them through whatever means you've set up, whatever the payment means is. Whoever buys anything on Amazon? Okay. There you go. We reckon that... Uh, the average age that people start having Amazon accounts now is eight. And so people as young as eight are being exposed to credit. So that's what, second or third grade, right? Because uh, my son's seven and he's in second, so yeah, second or third grade. Um, because what's happening is you're buying whatever it is, they're delivering it to you, and you're paying for it later. So already, you're being involved in credit, and are you taking good choices? So when you go onto Amazon, or Apple, how do you think about, yes, I'm sure I can pay for that? Yeah? That's right. So you're, you're, you're making sure that you have enough money from your allowance to pay for it which is exactly right. And this kind of basics needs to stay with you all the time. Don't spend more than your allowance because you don't have any way to get the money. And if you start taking bad choices now, 
in the future when you want to do bigger things, those bad choices will stay with you. So this is the basics of, of credit. We can go past this because I think you're all so smart we got straight past this already. Um, there are lots of different kinds though. So there are some basics and I promise to go all the way from the basics to maybe some of the more advanced thoughts. So, cash. Actually, cash isn't really the most basic form of money. The most basic form of money is things like uh, gold bullion. So actually, in the end, I promise to pay the bearer, or in, in, in the US, this is legal tender, means that dollar bill's worth nothing, but somebody somewhere has promised to pay it as a debt. Virtual money. No money, uh, no coins or paper money, not backed by government, governments either. So, let's think about this. Who's heard of Bitcoin? Okay, so some of you have heard of Bitcoin. Now, this is a very different kind. So, in the end, whenever you're on your Apple account or your iTunes account or your Amazon account, what you're doing is you're using money through credit, but that money in the end is backed up by a government. Because do anybody ever think, where does money actually come from? Well, the government prints the money. So they decide how much money can go into the economy. That's a much more complex topic for another day. But that's where money comes from. And so in the end, credit cards and bank accounts are all backed up by the government. And so you know they're reliable. Bitcoin is not backed up by the government. This is a completely new idea in some senses, but a very basic idea in another sense. It's an online, it only exists in the online world. And all it really is, is the promise that you use this online coin to pay for something and somebody else will make sure that you're paid back. So there are lots of different kinds of currency coming on. Now, I know you have it here at Pegasus, right? So I think, because my second grade son's telling me that he earns Pegasus dollars. Now, Pegasus dollars you can use, I think, at the end of the school year for things like the third grade business. So I don't know if some of you remember this when you're in second and third grade. Now, those money aren't government backed. They're Mr. Lopez backed currency. So he's created his own kind of currency and he said it can only be used in the school for these certain things. And you get more of it for good behavior, taking good choices, doing well at your schoolwork, and you get less of it for taking bad choices, not doing well at your schoolwork, not trying hard, not being thoughtful. And so in the end, what the school is doing is introducing this concept that goes right back to the beginning, money's just about promises and all about good choices. And it's a kind of Bitcoin. So you could think Bitcoin is very out there, very clever technology, very thoughtful, but your own school right here created its own kind of Bitcoin. So there you go, ahead of your time. Um, and you see the money taking place in lots of different ways, but in the end, it all goes back onto that report. It all goes back onto that report card, and it all goes back onto the score or the grade you get. So let's think about this. This is my final thing. We're going to move into a bit of a game in a minute, and then we'll come back for some questions uh, at the end. Um, so if you think about what, what my company does at work. So I think Mo did in a nice uh, introduction. Um, we're quite a big company here in Orange County. My offices are by South Coast Plaza in Costa Mesa, by the shopping mall there. Um, we have about 2,000 people working there, and we have lots of other people working all over the United States. And we collect information. Really, at the most basic, we collect information on people's choices. Have you taken good choices? And we put it all into a complex databases. But when you've got lots of information, you can do lots of things with that information. Now, first of all, we are, and you are all, protected by the government. So the government makes sure that we're responsible in how we use the information. It's important we don't do bad things with the information and we make sure that we help the society function effectively. But we are able to do lots of other clever things. So here are a few of the examples of what we can do with the information. But I wonder if you thought, all of that information that we know, where people live, who lives in the house, what their cell phone numbers are, what their email addresses are, what choices they've been taking about their money since they were 18 years old and maybe even younger nowadays and the grades and reports and scores. What, what sort of things do you think we could do with that to try and make it a source for good in society? We don't want to use the information to do bad things. What do you think we could do with it? Who's got some great ideas?
Absolutely. Make sure you can have good trust in people. Absolutely. What else do you think we can do with that? So we talk all about, every day at work, the importance of predicting things that are going to happen in the future. So what sort of things do we want to predict? Well, we want to make sure that somebody doesn't steal your identity and use it for something else. Now, we all know that when you go into the doctors or hospitals, you've probably seen the medical cards, right? You have the little plastic cards uh, that you have to say again. When you go to the doctors, you go to the hospital, you're promising to pay the doctors. We make sure that when people can go in, they really can afford to pay the doctors and that they're using the correct choices because it's important that everybody gets to have medical care. And so if they're entitled for some kind of charity benefit, we're able to say to the doctor, well, they have some insurance and they're entitled to this charity benefit, so you should treat them and you should use this money. There are lots, lots more examples. Um, and that's what we do all of the time is think about how information can help work out things that are going to happen, predict things that are going to happen in the future, and therefore help individuals and companies and other people take good choices with the money. So, I'm going to show you in a second um, our latest commercial. Because one of the fun things I get to do uh, at work is um, advertise some of our products. And sometimes we uh, sell to big companies, and sometimes we sell to people like you and your teachers and your mum and dad and your friends. Uh, and when we do that, we need to have commercials. But, but watch the commercial and think about how it tells you all of the messages that I've been giving. Remember, money's all about trust and good choices. Um, and so we're going to uh, flick over in a second to show this commercial. And this is our very latest one that we've put out there. This is how banks used to see me ever since I had a pretty bad accident three years ago. The medical bills, the credit card debt all piled up. I knew I had to get serious about my credit, so I signed up for Experian. They have real live credit experts I can talk to. They help educate me on how debt affected my FICO score so I can finally start managing my credit. Now my credit and I are both healing nicely. Get serious about your credit. Get Experian. Go to Experian.com and start your credit tracker trial membership today. So before we break quickly into the game, let's think about what that, what that commercial says. This man had an accident. He had a very nasty accident. And unfortunately, life got on top of him and he stopped paying his bills on time. Now, that unfortunately means that people that are extending him credit, I think we've talked about that, right? People that extend him credit think it's not such a good choice. And so he needs to both get his health back, but also his financial health back. And so we helped him get his financial health back. And while he was able to do that, then he was able to go back to doing all of the things that he wanted to do in his life. Uh, I just wanted to thank you all very much. There were some really smart questions. Um, I'm uh, talking at Georgetown a bit later in the year, but you're a much smarter audience, I'm sure, than all of them. Remember, when you go into your financial management, uh, money is all about promises. And the good choices that you take make a real difference to the future that you're going to have. Thank you very much indeed. And we've got some goodie bags as well, so thank you. Thank you.